Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. We're still snowed in and uh, I'm working from home, so if you hear some ambient noise, that's what that is. We're watching a movie in the other room, so it should be quiet now. Um, we're still working on practice problems and hypothesis testing for one population, uh, sample means and proportions. What we're going to look at now is hypothesis testing of a population, uh, one population proportion when we don't know the population standard deviation. Right? So we looked before when we thought we knew what the population standard deviation was. Now we're going to look at the case where we don't know. Um, all right, without further ado, this is question 28, chapter 9. A shareholders group in lobbying a protest claimed that the mean tenure for a chief executive officer, CEO, was at least nine years. At least nine years claimed. A survey of companies reported in the Wall Street Journal found a sample mean tenure of X bar equals 7.27 years for CEOs with a standard deviation of S equals 6.38. Okay. A. Formulate hypotheses that can be used to challenge the validity of the claim made by the shareholders group. Okay, if we want to challenge the validity of the claim, we want to prove them wrong, um, then we need to put their claim in the null, right? We've got to give them the benefit of the doubt so we can prove that it's false. Um, and what they're doing is that they're claiming that, uh, well, let's say let X be the tenure for a CEO. And their claim is that the mean of that population, the mean of the, the mean tenure for CEOs is at least nine years. Now, we can test this by against the alternative. The mean is actually less than nine years. So that's going to be part A right there. Um, how do we know this? Well, we know because claimed right here says they have a claim. They, it says at least nine years right here. They're talking about the mean tenure for a chief executive. So the tenure for a chief executive is what we're going to make X. The mean right here, the mean population mean, talking about the population of CEOs um, and so they're talking about mu x and that's what our hypothesis has to be about the claim they're making is that it's at least nine years and that's how we get this stuff how do we know where to put it well because we're challenging the validity of their claim we have to give them the benefit of the doubt and so their claim goes into the null okay now this isn't until part c but the way that i like to do it is for step two to be to state our uh, level of significance I'm going to write that now. I think it's a little more intellectually honest to state our uh, level of significance to start with. Let's say we're giving a pretty strict test, right? Let's say that there's less than a one. If, if we reject a null, there's less than one in a hundred chance, or there's a one in a hundred chance that that's a random, that, that, that it's true, but we reject it just because of randomness. Um, so it's a pretty strict test. If we prove it wrong, it's, it's pretty solid. Okay, so step three is to choose a test statistic. Now, we're looking at a same, we're looking at x bar, right? And we have a mu zero that we put here, right? That's going to be nine. And we know that the standard deviation of the sampling distribution is going to be equal to the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of our sample size. The problem is that we don't know this, so we have to estimate our standard deviation. And we're estimating it with S. That means we're estimating the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. That means that we can't relate it to the standard normal. What we can do is we can relate it to a t distribution. Right, so what this says, with a, and this says n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So what this says is that when we pull an x bar, which is going to be somewhere over here, this will be related to our t distribution. The way it's going to be related is with the, you know, the modified score function t equals x bar minus mu x bar over s divided by the square root of n, which has n minus 1 degrees of freedom. And that's essentially our test statistic, except that instead of mu x bar, we're going to use mu 0, because we're assuming that we have stated it correctly, right? That's the mean of the distribution under the null, and that's this right here. And so that's our test statistic. We use t because we don't know sigma. Right? Because this we don't have, so we have to use this instead. That's, so we use a t distribution. OK, step four is to actually well, estimate it right? in order to, to 
calculated. So we need x bar, we need mu zero, we need, let's scroll down a little bit here, we need s and we need n. And let's see what we have. Well, we have mu zero already, that's nine. If we scroll up from the question, Let's see, where's x bar? Where's x bar? Up oh, right here. X bar is 7.27 and s is 6.38. Let me just get to those two. 7.27 and 6.38. So here we go. Where's 7.27? 6.38. Now we just need our sample size. Let's see. Okay. Up here in part B, it says assume 85 companies were included in the sample. What is the p value for your hypothesis test? Uh, and equals 85. Okay, so what that's saying, when we turn this into a picture, is right here, this is where we are. 7.27 is our value x bar. The p value is going to be this area over here. Now, we don't know what that area is exactly because we don't know the curve, but we don't know the standard, de de uh, the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. But we can relate that to our t distribution get a value of t and find the area in this tail and that's going to be our p value. How do I know that that's what we're looking for? Well if you look over here what we have is a left tailed test. Right? We're looking for the chance that we would get something this low right, or lower assuming that our mean is properly specified. Right? Assuming that that's true if our null is true then what's the chance we would get 7.27 or lower? Um, that's going to give us our p-value. First, we need to figure out what our value of t is. We're relating it to the t-distribution. And t is going to be equal to 7.27 minus 9 over 6.38 over the square root of 85. Uh, now is a good time to bust out your calculator. I'm going to use Excel. And there we go. Equals 7.27 minus 9. That's my numerator. So negative 1.73 on top, and then on the bottom we have equals 6.38 divided by square root of 85, 0.692 on the bottom. That one's going to be pretty big. Let's see. Equals negative 1.73 divided by 0.692. And we can just use this right here to divide these. Equals A1 divided by A2. Negative 2.5, like right on the dot, we'll just call it negative 2.5. I have a guess that they did that on purpose. They wrote this question. So that's part four done. That's our T, negative 2.5. Now, what's the P value there? Well, we need to figure that out. <clears throat> what we're really looking for, remember, is a curve like this. You can draw this on your page. I would recommend it. Is a t distribution. How many degrees of freedom? Well, we had 85 in our n, so this is 84 and minus 1 degrees of freedom. And we have a t value of negative 2.5. We want to know what's the size of this tail. Okay, so let's look, let's find that. I'm going to open my t distribution if I can find it. Uh, let me get it open here. Um, and if you remember, when we're looking at the t-distribution, our t-distribution has a bunch of different, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It has a bunch of different curves on it. It has a lot of curves on it, right? Uh, we need to make sure we're looking at the one we need. And so we need to find how many degrees of freedom we have. So we have 84 degrees of freedom. And if you look here, we have a degrees of freedom column. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down to where we're at 84, in the row that has 84. Then we have a bunch of numbers. Now we're, it's asking us to find the p-value. Uh, and the p-value, in this case, we're going to have to bound it. We can't look it up exactly because the only information we have is one, two, three, four, five, six different chunks, six different areas. And what we want to do, it only has positive numbers. So what it does is it tells us, okay, I'll give you uh, a value of t that has, let's say, 0 0.10 in it. And I'll give you a value of t that has 0 0.05. I'll give you another one that has 0 0.01. And that's the information that we get from our t-table. 
is the values of the, the t that correspond for a given curve. So for 84, uh, for 0 0.01, we have 2.372. And what we're looking for is we're looking for those that fall on either side of ours. So 2.372 falls um, on either side of the positive version of our test statistic. 2.372 falls on there. And in addition, then on the other side, 2.636 is what we have, which is 0 0.005 to the right. So we go over here, 0 0.005, and this is a t-value of 2.636. Now because it's symmetrical, what that says is that there's an area over here that's in blue, that's 0 0.005. And then there's another area that I'll use the orange for again. Over here, it's in orange. That's 0 0.01. And this corresponds to t value of it's just negative, negative 2.372. That's what our table tells us, right? <clears throat> what that means is that the red triangle, red triangle, triangular shape, whatever, the red, red tail here. This falls somewhere in between, right? That, that area is between those two other areas. And that's the best that we can do. We can say that, well, 0 0.005 is less than our p-value, which is the, the area in red, which is less than the area in orange, 0 0.01. Okay, is that good enough? Well, yeah, because we know where alpha falls in here, right? This is equal to alpha. That's what our alpha was 1%. And so what that says, if our p-value is less than alpha, we can say, well, there's less than a 1% chance we would get a p that looks like this, right? And 1% was our level of significance. So what that means is that we reject the null. We said at the beginning, in step two, that these are our hypotheses, and if, uh, if there's less than a 1% chance that these are true, right? Or that, that if we find a, a sample that's that there's less than a one percent chance would just happen randomly, then we're going to reject the null. We reject the null, it means it's false, which means that the claim the shareholders group made is incorrect. Right? So, what is our conclusion at alpha equals zero point zero one? What's our conclusion? Our conclusion is that the shareholders group was an error. Uh, this claim was false. So that's how you work with a uh, test statistic, a t-test statistic. That's how you solve problems when you don't know the underlying population standard deviation. Pardon me. Um, we just use the sample standard deviation s to estimate it. And that means that we have to use a t-distribution. But in other respects, uh, it's the same. Basically, the, the new skills that we have to deal with, we already dealt with t-distributions a little bit. They're a little bit like normal distribution. The new skills are really going to be about uh, working with hypotheses and getting used to formulating them and then knowing how to go from a test to a p-value and what that means in terms of interpretation. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, post them as comments or shoot me an email. Um, it's jjdelaney at ualr.edu or uh, econ.dr.d is my, is my uh, YouTube address and I'll, I'll answer, answer them as quickly as I can. Thanks and have a good day. Bye.